kanisa Murega Murega Rigi Kaino Mwega Edesio De Mwadhani Agosho Asante Sana Nimeshukuru kufika hapa siku ya leo kidi alikuwa amealika aliyekuwa siku hiyo naibu wa rais ambaye sasa ni rais wetu sisi tulikuwa tumekuja kumsindikisha tukaombewa katika kanisa hii na mmeona hiyo maombi inaendelea kufanya kazi asanteni sana ya pili yangu bishop kahiga na bishop wanjoi walikuwa wamesema tukutane hapa na au marafiki wetu wengine MPs kina Sabina ili tusaidie kanisa kwa hiyo mradi ambao governor Kaiga ameeleza lakini haikuwezekana last Sunday kwa sababu mheshimiwa rais alikuwa hapa mimi nataka nishukuru bishop shukuru kanisa na nishukuru viongozi wa Nyeri County kwa kufanya heshima kwa sababu wakati tulisikia mheshimiwa rais anakuja tukakubaliana sisi zote tuairishe hiyo e, function ambayo tulikuwa nayo kwa heshima ya mgeni wetu ambao tulikuwa naye ambaye ni rais wetu it's a very good thing you did na it doesn't cost anything to respect authority it costs nothing kwa hivyo nashukuru sana na umeona naye Mungu ametusaidia ile tungefanya last Sunday sisi tutafanya leo. So uh, badala ya kuwa na ibada hapa na Mheshimiwa Rais naye yako pale mlifanya kitu kizuri na washukuru sana. Mimi niko hapa kwa sababu kama nilivyosema nimealikwa na e, kama Daudi nataka niseme e, katika saburi moja ishirini na mbili mstari wa kwanza wakati nilialikwa na bishop through the governor nilifurahi kwa sababu hiyo Psalms 122 inasema nilifurahi pamoja na wale waliniambia njo twende nyumba ya Bwana I was glad when they said unto me come let us go to the house of the Lord vile vile nika niko hapa kwa sababu Biblia vile vile inasema katika Saburi 84 mstari wa kumi ya kwamba siku moja katika nyumba ya Mungu ni bora kuliko siku elfu moja mahali pengine so i'm happy that i'm here even if not for a full day even the few hours that we are here i know it's more beneficial to me as a person as a believer than spending a thousand days elsewhere unajua um, nashukuru Mungu ametupatia nafasi hii kwa sababu sisi ambao tunasaidia rais wetu na deputy president katika mambo ya usalama wa nchi na na wenzangu wengine wako hapa kasi yetu ni ngumu kidogo na nilisikia bishop akitaja hata kulala ni shida ukilala hata masaa mawili ni shida it's very difficult sababu changamoto ni nyingi na ujui wale watu wa ovu watapanga uovu wao siku gani na saa ngapi saa gani lakini Mungu ametusaidia tunajaribu na tumejaribu kwa sababu vile vile hata kama tunasaidia katika mambo ya usalama mwenye kuleta usalama kamili na usalama wa milele sio waziri sio OCS sio hata rais wetu ni Mwenyezi Mungu muumba mbingu na nchi yeye si mchaji wa security na wakati huu nimekuwa katika nafasi hii nimepata nguvu 
sana kutokana na maneno ama neno lililo katika Zaburi 127 mstari wa kwanza sehemu ya pili ambayo inasema ya kwamba isipokuwa Mungu alinde mji wale walinzi wanapoteza usingizi bure unless the lord watches over the city the watchman stay up awake in vain kwa hivyo sisi hata kama tunajaribu kusukumana na hii mambo ya usalama tunajua nchi yetu iko mikononi ya Mwenyezi Mungu na kuna mambo mabaya yataharibika because our god is in charge kazi yetu ni kujaribu vile tuvyozavyo using our human effort to ensure we have a peaceful country hata mimi sitakuwa na mambo mengi nataka tulitaje mambo mawili ya kwanza unajua hii nyeri sehemu hii mimi mahali nilizaliwa ipande ile ingine ya mlima huu mlima Kenya ba uko tu hapa na hapa hii Nyeri ni kaunti ambayo ilitupatia rais watatu wa Jamhuri ya Kenya mzee Mwai Kibaki Mzee Mwai Kibaki alikuwa na marafiki wengi wa kisiasa upande wa Meru hata wakati alikuwa anasimama na kulikuwa na candidates wengine kutoka hii central area watu wa Meru walikuwa wanasimama na mzee Kibaki kweli si kweli ni kweli ama si kweli hata wakati kulikuwa na other candidates watu wa sehemu ile walikuwa wanasimama na mzee Kibaki sio hiyo urafiki ilikuwa imetoka wapi um, na alikuwa na watu wengi ambao vile vile wakati aliingia kwa serikali walifanya nao kazi kiwemo mzee Mudhaura, mzee Kiraito, mzee Mwiraria na watu wengi wa sehemu ile. Na mimi nikiwa hapa ile jambo nataka kusema ni kwamba utawala wa Mheshimiwa Rais Mstaafu marehemu Mwai Kibaki ndio utawala ambao ulituonyesha ya kwamba nchi yetu iko na uwezo wakuwa na uchumi ambao umeimarika na vile vile kujitegemea kiuchumi na kuachana na tabia ya kuombaomba pesa kutoka kwa nchi zingine. Nataka nirudie kwa Kiingereza. The third president of Kenya, President Kibaki, in his 10 years of leadership was able to demonstrate to all of us as a country Kenya has enough resources and Kenya has the ability to raise enough revenue from its people for purposes of developing our country without depending on borrowing from the taxes and the savings of other people. Na kama kuna heshima Mheshimiwa Marehemu Kibaki ameacha katika historia ya nchi yetu ni kujifunza kutufunza kujitegemea kama taifa and i think it's a biblical principle there is no honor there is no pride in begging kweli si kweli kwa hivyo mimi nikiwa hapa nimeangalia yale mambo mzee kibaki alifanya na vile vile nimeangalia utaratibu au mpango ambao mheshimiwa rais wa tano mheshimiwa William Ruto ako nao katika mambo ya taifa letu la Kenya na yeye mwenyewe amesema yeye ni mwanafunzi katika mambo ya uongozi wa mzee Mwai Kibaki kwa hivyo mimi niko na hakika ya kwamba katika utawala huu wa mheshimiwa William Ruto 
na msaidizi wake mheshimiwa Rigathi Gashagwa nchi yetu itapata kupata rasilimali za kutosha za kuendesha nchi yetu na mambo ya kukopa madeni mengi ambayo yataumiza vizazi vijavyo hiyo mambo itasimama na katika ile masauti mingi ambayo bishop ametusaidia kusimamisha mimi ningesihi tuongeze ile sauti ambayo ni sauti ya kutuambia kama wa Kenya ati siku zote lazima tuwe tunakopa pesa ya wazungu na wa Chinese na watu wengine ambao wamejenga mataifa yao kupitia jasho ya watu wao I believe this country can raise enough revenue to sustain the country's economic programs and that is why where president ruto and his administration would like to take this country to return it where former president mwai kibaki left it na ikiwa hapo niseme kuna kuwa, kuna kuwa na mijadala mambo ya kodi na kama kuna mwanzilishi wa ushuru na kodi ni mzee Kibaki na hapo ndio mheshimiwa William Ruto amekanyanga katika hizo nyayo we must have enough revenue to develop our country and stop begging from the taxes of other countries na jambo la pili kuna yale mambo yameongewa hapa ya siasa na unajua sisi katika man, masuala ya usalama hatuhusiki na mambo ya siasa kwa sababu siasa iko na wale watu ambao wamechaguliwa kufanya mambo ya siasa ndio umeona huyo seneta wa Matinga anaongea Kiswahili alafu anaongea Kikuyu anaongea Kiswahili alafu anajaribu ku you know is trying to see kama kuna kitu anaweza sema ndio zinisikie lakini nimesikia kila kitu mmesema <laughs> na kwa sababu ni mambo ya kisiasa ni sawa bora tusifanye mambo ambayo ni kinyume na sheria ni sema ya kwamba tumekuwa na changamoto sisi kama wasimamizi wa usalama wa nchi kwa wanasiasa ambao kwa muda mrefu wametumia mambo ya siasa kuharibu udhabiti na usalama wa taifa letu na hakuna jambo ambalo halina mwisho diposa mmesikia mheshimiwa rais amesema tuamrisha sisi ambao ni watu ya masuala ya usalama sisi atuingilie mambo ya siasa sisi tunalinda usalama wa nchi hao wenzangu ambao wako hapa tumezungumza tumekubaliana mambo ya siasa tuachie watu ya siasa sisi tusimame na utapiti na usalama wa nchi yetu na mheshimiwa rais ametuamrisha tusitumie vyombo vya kiusalama na silaha na nguvu ambayo tuko nayo ya usalama wa taifa kuumiza wananchi wasio atia wasio na atia ama kukandamiza watu kwa njia za kisiasa ili hali vile vile tukiwa hapo kazi yetu ni lazima tukabiliane na wale watu wote ambao wanasorotesha usalama wa nchi hata wakiwa katika siasa kama vile tumehubiriwa hapa kila baada ya uchaguzi kuna watu wamekataa ya kwamba nchi yetu iko na katiba na iko na sheria na iko na utaratibu wa kisheria kwa wale watu ambao hawajaridhika na matokeo ya kisiasa na utaratibu ni kwamba kama wewe umesimama kama MCA ama mbunge ama rais na labda 
haujaridhika na yale matangazo yamefanywa unaenda kotini koti inaamua kwa hivyo taasisi za kuamua mambo ya siasa ziko katika katiba kuna watu ambao kwa miaka mingi wameturudisha nyuma wamepatia Kenya aibu kwa sababu wakishindwa badala ya kutumia taratibu za kisheria wameumiza wananchi wameleta maafa wameleta vifo wameharibu biashara na wamesumbua taifa ili kwa miaka mingi ndipo sasa tumesema kama vile tumeambiwa na bisho wakati umefika wa kukomesha na kusimamisha wahalifu wote wakiwemo wanasiasa ambao wanajificha nyuma ya siasa kuharibu usalama wa nchi haitawezekana haita tena katika taifa la Kenya mwanasiasa yeyote haijalishi yako na nguvu kiasi gani hawa upande wa upinzani au upande wa serikali atutakubali mtu yeyote ya siasa tena kuharibu mali kuumiza wananchi kuleta vifo akijizingizia yeye ati ni siasa anafanya mwezi uliopita wanasiasa wengine pale wakasema wanaitisha maandamano ya kisiasa tukajaribu ilikuwa Jumatano tukasema wacha tujaribu tuone hawa watu kama wataandamana kwa amani warudi nyumbani mlilijionea ile Jumatano walienda wakaribu express way ambayo imejengwa na kodi ya wakenya na madeni ambayo tutalipa wakaenda wakafunga barabara wakaenda wakadunga watu kwa visu wakaiba mali ya watu wakachoma ma, ma, e, e, gari za polisi wakapiga polisi na mawe na ilipofika kama saa saba tukaamua ya kwamba hiyo lazima tukomeshe kwa sababu ilikuwa imebainika hakuna uwezekano ya kufanya yale mambo pasipo na maafa and from that day the government has decided that it will not allow again the destruction of the property of the people of Kenya it will not allow citizens whatever their grievances to stone policemen who are on duty to ban police vehicles and to attack government facilities we had ugly incidents some of them bridge, uh, only some of them bordering on an attack on our sovereignty as a country wengine wanaenda wanavunja nyumba ya deputy county commission na ofisi kuna uhusiano gani kati ya bei ya unga na ofisi ya DCC wengine walipatikana wakichoma bendera ya Kenya na it is not going to be possible again na wale watu ambao wanataka kufanya siasa yao lazima wakubali kusia, kufanya siasa ya amani so nataka niwahakikishie wananchi wote wa jamhuri ya Kenya never again will anybody threaten the peace stability and tranquility of our country using any reason whatsoever na tumesikia sasa hao wana, wana siasa wameenda kuongea sisi kama walinda usalama hatuna shida hiyo ni mambo ya demokrasia watu ya upinzani na watu ya eh, serikali wakitaka kuongea mambo ya siasa ni sawa on one condition hiyo mazungumzo isipofaulu kusiwe mtu atatishia watu watu tena ati kwa sababu yale mazungumzo hatujazikizana ati sasa tunarudi kuumiza raia so the people of nyeri the people of kenya the country is safe
tuko na changamoto lakini nchi yetu iko salama na tuta tu, aitawezekana tena mtu yeyote atikuterrorize wananchi instilling fear and terror on innocent people because they want to achieve political objectives we must remove violence from the equation mahali wakati wana, watu wanapanga siasa yao wakuwe wabunge wakuwe MCA wakuwe governor wakuwe senator wakuwe rais mtu apange kuusa sera na asiporidhika na matokeo afuate sheria na afuate taasisi utaratibu ambao uko katika katiba wa kulalamika violence must not be part of the equation so those politicians who are engaging in talks can continue we have no role in it ourselves we are security managers in case of course we hope that they will agree there is no problem in agreeing but in the event that they don't agree nobody nobody should imagine that they can threaten and terrorize Kenyans again simply because what they were planning to achieve has not been realized you come to my lawan hiyo ndio msimamo wa serikali ya William Ruto so mimi nataka nikomee hapo niseme nimeshukuru kwa hapa muendelee kuombea nchi yetu muendelee kuombea rais muendelee kuombea naibu wa rais na mimi nataka niseme ile kazi ambayo tumeanza hapa hapa kwetu centro kuna shida kubwa ya mambo ya madawa na pombe na mulisikia mheshimiwa rais aliniambia tufanye kazi na naibu wa rais ili tuhakikishe tumeshirikiana na hao wenzetu ambao wako katika wizara ya usalama kupigana na hiyo mambo ya mihadarati na pombe mpaka sasa tumefanya hatua kiasi lakini bado kuna kazi ya kufanya nataka nipongeze regional commissioner wetu na ambaye yako hapa na timu yote kwa kazi nzuri ambayo mnaendelea kufanya i want to ask you to continue providing leadership and strategic guidance to the officers who are serving under you in this region na mimi eh, azima niwakumbushe mkiwa hapa mjua ya kwamba hii ni county ya deputy president so please make sure that uh, you know he is helping the president to serve the whole country so we should have as little problems as possible here so that akikuja hapa na kuja tu weekend kutembea na kuleta rais wakati anatembea hapa so we hope that you continue doing the good work nimesikia ile mambo mheshimiwa madhengi amesema ya ile kazi ambayo imebaki ya kupigana na miadarati na madawa and i want to announce that the government will review all licenses in Kenya of second generation brewers zote we are going to review all of them afresh because some of them are licensed of course the, the ones that are operating without licenses we have already shut them down and if you know of any that are still operating let us know but there are some people selling illicit alcohol in licensed facilities there are others also manufacturing illicit alcohol but they are licensed but what they are manufacturing is not what they are licensed to manufacture so we are going to review all the licenses of second generation manufacturers alcohol manufacturers with the, and, and we are going to ensure that every facility that is licensed manufactures or sells what it is licensed to manufacture or to sell nikimalizia ndio tufanye mchango mheshimiwa pia na wale viongozi wengine wamesema kuna shida hapa ya wizi wa kahawa na hiyo shida iko katika sehemu nyingi ambazo kahawa kahawa ina inakuzwa and we have decided that we will 
provides police protection to all coffee factories to make sure that we stop this crime against our people where their wealth, their property, and their sweat is being stolen by unscrupulous people who wants to benefit and to reap where they have not sown. Kwa hivyo mimi na shukuru sana nikifika hapo niseme neno la leo limetujenga limetusaidia na kwa sababu tuko hapa kwa mchango ningetaka tuchange ile pesa ambayo yote inahitajika kwa chini ya dakika kumi. na ili tumalize haraka naomba wale wako na kamera mwachane na kamera sasa tumemaliza ile story mlikuwa mnataka wacha tu tusaidie bishop na tusaidie kanisa ili tupate gari ya bishop ya kumsaidia katika huduma kwa watu wake nawashukuru sana nataka kuuliza chairperson ambaye alikuwa 